While history is a fascinating and important area of study, it's also a disturbing reminder of just how far humanity's come and how much farther we still have to travel. Case in point, throughout most of human history, women have been at a serious disadvantage, having little to no rights and often being subject to the will of their male relatives. And no film illustrates this fact more clearly, at least in terms of the films that I've covered, than The Last Duel. Based on the book of the same name by Eric Jagger, The Last Duel recounts the story of a pair of medieval squires, forced to fight to the death over the accusations of a noblewoman, who, despite their limited power within medieval society, refused to stay silent after being assaulted. To try to avoid getting demonetized or having my video taken down, I decided not to use the R word for this review, though I understand that this video may still be triggering to some people, and if you need to stop watching, then I fully encourage you to do so. But how's the film hold up to the book it was based on, or history in general? Let's take a look and find out. Given the film's long runtime and the short length of its source material, it should come as no surprise that the filmmakers were able to include the bulk of the book's contents, including, in France during the late 14th century, two squires in service to Count Pierre of Alençon, Jean de Carouge and Jacques Legris, enter into a rivalry sparked primarily by the Count's favoritism towards the latter squire. While on campaign, Carouge met and married Marguerite de Tuberville, the daughter of Robert de Tuberville, an infamous traitor to the French crown. In constant need of funds and finding his dowry insufficient, Carouge attempted to regain a parcel of land that his father-in-law had sold to Count Pierre. The estate in question, Anou Le Facon, was later gifted to Jacques Legree, who was understandably frustrated at the prospect of being sued by his best friend. Though Carouge was unable to regain Anou Le Facon, his actions only served to aggravate Legree, and may have also impacted his prospects at court, as after the death of his father, Jean Carouge III, he was deemed ill-suited to inherit his father's position as captain of Belem Castle, a post traditionally held by the Carouge family. Understandably embarrassed by the whole affair, Carouge chose to take a brief break from life at court, until he and his wife decided to attend a party hosted by fellow squire Jean Crespin. Finding Legree among the crowd, Carouge, intent on ending their feud, greeted him like an old friend, even going so far as to insist that Marguerite give him a kiss as a sign of their renewed friendship. The following May, Carouge, always in desperate need of money, set out on campaign to Scotland. Though after six months of grueling battles, he returned home sick and virtually bankrupt. Though Carouge's efforts on the battlefield had managed to earn him a knighthood, his new position did little to alleviate his financial burden. So, in early January 1386, he traveled to Paris to collect the wages owed to him by the king's war treasury, with a quick stop at Argentan to inform Count Pierre of his return. However, during Carouge's journey, Legree, with the help of another squire named Adam Lovell, assaulted Marguerite who, unable to bring charges against Legree herself, being that the French court considered the assault of a married woman to be a property crime against her husband, encouraged Jean to seek justice on her behalf. After seeking the counsel of close friends and family, the couple decided to appeal to their lord, Count Pierre, being that he was legally responsible for settling quarrels between his vassals. Though the Count was willing to offer the couple a hearing, the court settled in favor of Legree, who Count Pierre, as presiding judge, declared to be completely innocent and wholly without guilt, insisting that the entire affair had simply been a dream. 
Unable to accept his lord's verdict, Carouge traveled to Paris to appeal his case directly to the king, with the hope of challenging Legree to a judicial duel, a form of trial by combat that was believed to determine a person's guilt through divine judgment, as a loser was deemed guilty by God. This was an incredibly risky move, not just for Carouge, but for his wife. As, if he were to lose the duel, she, as the main witness in the case, would also be found guilty and burned at the stake. Complicating matters further was the fact that the Gris, as a cleric in minor orders, had the right to have his case heard in a church court, where a trial by combat was not allowed. Though thankfully, Legree, either to save face or because he had somehow absorbed Carouge's habit for making bad decisions, decided to accept the challenge. Thus, on December 29th, 1386, a few months after the birth of Marguerite and Jean's first child, Robert Carouge, both men marched onto the field at saint martin des Combes, a monastery in Paris, ready to defend their claims to the death. While larger and in better health, considering Carouge is recorded to have had a fever prior to the start of the duel, Jacques Legree eventually succumbed to the experience and ferocity of his opponent, wherein his body was stripped of its armor and taken to Montfaucon, a stone gallows outside of Paris, where it was displayed for all to see. Set during the Hundred Years' War, the film begins at the Battle of the Moche on September 19th, 1370. While this battle is famous for solidifying the bloody reputation of Prince Edward of Aquitaine, an English prince who's said to have executed 3,000 men, women, and children during the siege, the author of The Last Duel makes no mention of the Battle of the Moche or the squire's participation in it. While it is possible that Carouge and Legree participated in the battle, being that they were both probably in their mid to late thirties at the time, the two squires would not have been under the command of Count Pierre, but would instead have been in the service of his younger brother, Count Robert of Perche. Pierre inherited Robert's land and title upon its death in 1377, seven years after the Battle of the Moche. Unlike in the film, Anu de Faucon was not extorted from Robert de Tuberville, but was instead sold to Count Pierre for 8,000 livres in 1377, three years before Jean Carouge married his daughter in 1380. While the captaincy of Belem Castle did pass out of the Carouge family following the death of Jean's father in 1382, Jacques Legree was ineligible to fill the position, as he was already serving as the captain of Fort Exma, a position he inherited from his own father in 1370. While most people would be understandably hesitant to sue their boss, it seems that Jean de Carouge was not one of those people, as he filed not one, but two lawsuits against his lord, Count Pierre. After the initial suit in 1380 regarding the ownership of a new Le Faucon, Carouge filed suit again in 1382 over the captaincy of Belem Castle arguing that Pierre had robbed him of his birthright by denying him his father's position. The relationship between Count Pierre and Carouge continued to degrade, when the next year, in 1382, Carouge purchased two fiefs of land, ignorant of Count Pierre's prior claim to both estates. Being that the previous owner had died without an heir, According to feudal law, the ownership of his lands reverted to his lord, in this case Count Pierre, voiding Carouge's purchase and forcing him to take a brief hiatus from court to escape the embarrassment. The assault, rather than occurring at Carouge's castle, like in the film, took place at the estate of Jean's mother, Nicole Carouge. Capolemenil, a moss estate in northwestern France, was located near the home of Legree's alleged accomplice, Adam Louvel, 
who may have acted as a spy, informing Legree of Nicole's absence on the day of the crime. According to Jagger's book, unlike in the film, Marguerite's pregnancy was never brought up as evidence during the Parliament's inquiry, as at the time, it was believed that conception only resulted from pleasurable relations, meaning that assault could not cause pregnancy, a fact which was actually recognized by French law. The date for the duel was originally set for November 27, 1386. But King Charles VI of France, then on campaign with his uncles, sent a courier to Paris ordering that the duel be postponed until December 29th, so he could witness the event in person. Judicial duels, despite their solemn nature, were fairly elaborate events steeped in religious ceremony, most of which is removed from the film. After arriving in a grand procession, the combatants took to the field, dressed in full armor, where they each publicly declared their reason for dueling before presenting their charges to one another in writing. Forget the bloodshed! Who wouldn't want to see a pair of knights exchanging paperwork? That's the real crowd pleaser. After staying the charges, Jacques Legree knelt before the marshal to be knighted, ensuring that he and his opponent would be on equal footing during the fight. Then, after a public declaration of the rules, the knights were asked to kneel in front of an altar and swear three oaths, swearing to the justice of their cause that they spoke the truth on peril of their souls, and that their reason for fighting was noble in the eyes of God. While I've drawn the majority of my historical research from the book the film is based on, The Last Duel by Eric Jagger, upon further searching, I found that Jagger may have taken a few liberties with his description of certain events, especially regarding the duel. While both the book and film depict the two knights using a variety of weapons, both on horseback and on foot, such as lances, axes, swords, and daggers, according to the monk of St. Denis, a well-known historian and chronicler at King Charles VI court, the battle between the two men was fought with only lances and swords. By contrast, both the film and the book present a much more dramatic battle, complete with high-stakes drama and unnecessary horse aside. The one thing both Jagger and St. Denis seem to agree on is the duel's conclusion, where an injured Carouge wrapped his opponent's helmet, pushing him to the ground, effectively trapping him with the weight of his own armor before mounting and dispatching him at the point of a sword or knife in Jagger's version. Strangely enough, Kavuja's impromptu judo move is absent from the film, which instead depicts him implementing a strategically timed football tackle before finishing Legree off with his knife. While it's true that Jean de Carouge IV died during the Crusades, most likely during the Battle of Nicopolis in 1396, the film's epilogue neglects to mention that Jean and Marguerite went on to have two more children before his death, a fact which suggests that their relationship may have been a bit more loving than the last section of the film leads us to believe. Though given that women in 14th century France had virtually no rights and were pretty much subject to the will of their husbands, the film's interpretation of their marriage is also pretty believable. Though the duel's outcome was attributed to the will of God, many people throughout history have continued to debate the degree's innocence. For instance, the Chronicle of St. Denis, which I quoted earlier, states that an unnamed felon actually confessed to the assault while awaiting execution, vindicating Legree and forcing the grief-stricken Marguerite to take an oath of perpetual continence, which means she either became a nun or vowed to become very good at controlling her bladder. The meaning's a little unclear. While St. Dennis's account and other stories like it have never been substantiated, the one thing I know for certain is that I'm personally very glad I was not born during the Middle Ages, and anyone who says otherwise is an absolute idiot. 
Like, did I mention that all this happened a few decades after France was hit by the first wave of the bubonic plague? Well, as always, I'm Sliver Jade, asking you to please remember to support your local library, and I hope to see you again next time.